All right, everybody, let's get right to Helene. That's the story. It's a very complex setup. It is going to have a huge impact on many areas, especially the Western Carolinas. So let's dive right into this. Now, a couple things to notice. I'm starting wide for a good reason. One, you're starting to see how large Helene is going to get. This is the big story because everybody focuses on that skinny line or the cone. That's where the center is, folks. That's not where the impacts are. The other thing, look at what's going on currently. This is what we call a predecessor event. This is a stalled front with tropical moisture that's been dumping heavy rain, honestly, since yesterday. And during the day today, we're gonna see heavy rain develop it along this front and the mountains with heavy moisture, really moisture coming in from the Atlantic and some coming in from the Gulf of Mexico, not associated with Helene. It's almost a completely separate event that happens ahead of tropical systems. And what this does, it's going to saturate the ground and cause the, the flooding or the potential flooding from Helene to be worse because everything's going to be soaked. So this is actually kind of a concerning event. And a lot of research has been done on these type of events where you see heavy rain the day or even two days before the tropical system moves in because of other mechanisms. In this case, a stalled cold front, an upper low, which is actually over here. You can actually see the rotation around that high pressure off the East Coast. It's unfortunately kind of the perfect setup for a disaster for flash flooding. And then that doesn't even start to consider what's going to come in with Helene. The thing about Helene is I'm going to stop the loop here. It's probably a hurricane right now. By the time you're watching this, I know I have a tropical storm icon. Trust me, it'll be a hurricane by in about 30 minutes. So let's see, let's get that out of the way. But look how big it is. It's massive. And also notice how big it is on the east side. So if the storm tracks like this, which we think it is, the impacts will be all the way out here and all the way to here. So definitely more impacts on the right or the east side. That's why folks in the Carolinas are going, well, it's going to our west. Not a good thing. <laughs> that puts us in <laughs> the heart of the worst damage. So I'll show you the forecast track real quickly here. And again, I don't expect a lot of changes here um, as it moves to the north. Um, it's the, the, real, the real questions only are how strong. Um, how strong, cat two, cat three, could it be a cat four? Cat 3 seems very likely, but you can see the track right through Atlanta. And just a he heads up, I just posted this on my social media. Uh, just looking at this setup, this has the potential to be Atlanta's Hugo. Fast moving, rapidly intensifying hurricane that will take winds well inland, meaning hurricane force winds likely in Atlanta uh, Thursday night into Friday. That's the overnight hours. That's going to cause widespread tree damage. Atlanta's got a, a not as great a tree canopy as Charlotte, but a nice tree canopy. A lot of trees and power lines and also very, very heavy rain. Let's get to the forecast here. Whoops, kind of jumped ahead here. So here's my forecast maps here. I'm going to pause it a couple times. So that's a look at where the storm should be sometime Thursday afternoon into Friday morning, somewhere on the Big Banner. Everybody in Florida watching this, you know, huge storm surge, hopefully already evacuated, but big time issues. Now, because of the forward speed, look how fast this is going to be moving you're going to notice that it's likely going to be a hurricane pretty far into Georgia. I mean, it's forecast to still be a hurricane north of Albany, Georgia, which means by the time it gets up towards Atlanta, right in here, there's still going to be at least hurricane force gust. It may be sustained. So think of all the trees in Georgia, just a lot of tree and power line damage. So uh, if you're in Georgia watching this, please be prepared for extended power outages. Very, very good chance that's going to happen. And then it gets absorbed by the upper low and kind of meanders back to the east or the west. So for us, this is for the Charlotte area, Western Carolinas. The timing is Thursday, Friday. The winds and rain are the biggest impact. And what you need to do is start preparing for power outages. And that goes for just about everybody. There will be winds with this, even outside the heavy rain. And be prepared for flash flooding. That means don't drive in the flooded roadways. If you have any plans to go to the mountains or go west, that's it. That's the area you want to avoid Thursday into Friday. Now, if you're going east, no issues. Going north, no issues. Really going southeast, no major issues. Yeah, rain and a little bit of wind, but safe, okay? It's going west into the mountains, going towards Tennessee, going towards Atlanta, uh, going towards the upstate of South Carolina. Those are the areas that we're going to have the biggest issues um, over the next couple of days. So I put up my Ready, Set, Go map um, for Florida. Hopefully, everybody down there is already paying attention to this. If you're in the red area, hopefully evacuated, head to higher ground, doing everything you need to do. Uh, you're, you're taking care of business right now. So for the Charlotte area, this is for my, my folks here. 
Um, this is kind of a, a good idea on what the timing impacts. Not a lot of change here, honestly. Um, power outages will peak overnight Thursday into early Friday, could linger into Friday afternoon. If I were to give you one you know, thing to take away from this vlog for the Charlotte area, Carolinas, the biggest impacts. Now, we're going to see rain tomorrow, Thursday, most of Thursday, but the biggest impacts start Thursday night and they go to a probably midday on Friday, okay? Things will improve dramatically here going into Friday night and Saturday. So high school football games, as long as there's no damage and flooded roadways and power, the weather actually should be pretty good for high school football. The problem is how bad is everything ahead of it? Saturday, Sunday, yeah, scattered showers around because of the upper low, but much better weather. Tornado risk, little uncertain here. I'm going to put it low, but if you're on the coast of the Carolinas, much more elevated. East of 95 looks to be an area that I would be paying attention to for that. Now, let me get into the future cast. Um, I'm going to try to get right to the point here. We're not going to focus too much on a lot of the steering current stuff because honestly, all that's pretty well known. There's not a lot of variability in the track. The biggest variabilities will be in the intensity and forward speed. So that's why I'm not focusing or hyper focusing on the steering currents now because it's pretty straightforward. So let's focus on future cast here locally. I'm going to play this. I'll stop it a couple times. I'm just going to do radar here. I'm going to go into tonight. And so this is what I mean by a precursor event. Look at the heavy rain developing today and tonight in the mountains and foothills, less so in the Charlotte area. So just a heads up in Charlotte, we're going to see rain, but it's probably not going to be as big a flood issue, or at least right now, based on what I'm seeing for the mountains and foothills. But if we are going to see flooding issues develop in the Piedmont, it's going to happen overnight Thursday into Friday. So this is tomorrow morning. Look at the rain that is falling in the mountains and foothills. So this is that... Uh, you know, precursor event or predecessor event we just talked about, heavy rain falling well ahead of Helene that actually has nothing to do directly with Helene. It's because of the stalled front and the tropical moisture. So this is all a different event, but it's going to cause additional problems once Helene's moisture gets here. So Thursday, 8 a.m., 9 a.m. So here's where the rain starts to pick up in Charlotte. Charlotte's not, not going to see a great day Thursday. Scattered showers, some heavy downpours. And again, there could be some pockets of heavy rain in there. As we go through Thursday afternoon, the rain really picks up in intensity. And as we go through Thursday night, this is when we start to see maybe some of the first hints of outer bands of Helene um, by Thursday night. So things will deteriorate pretty, pretty quickly Thursday night for most of the areas, these waves of heavy rain move in. So it really, this, this event starts Thursday, to be honest with you. Um, Thursday looks worse than Friday night. <laughs> Friday night, things will be improving. So Friday morning, we get into the wee hours of the morning. 3 a.m. This is where we really see the direct impacts of Helene coming north. This is the, the first real slug of moisture coming up, 6, 7 o'clock in the morning. Now, if we're going to see flooding in Charlotte and the Piedmont, this is what's going to it's going to happen Friday morning because these heavy rain bands, even though they're only here for a few hours, they could produce several inches of rain in, in a short period of time. And just think about all the rain that fell in the mountains ahead of this. Look what happens if these rain bands get oriented. And again, these are pivoting or moving into the mountains like fire hoses. This, this, oh, this is bad, bad news. I really worry about what's going to happen there um, as that pushes through. And then by Friday afternoon, we start to see rapid improvement. So things improve pretty dramatically Friday afternoon. Um, let's look at the wind speeds because I know this is a big thing we haven't talked too much about um, until the last day or so. This is really trending up. So I'm only going to plot, um, these are the wind gusts, by the way, not sustained winds. I'm also putting on the, the contours or the colors are only 35 mile per hour winds or higher, um, which is kind of that threshold I use to like, yeah, that's kind of a big deal, trying to tropical depression type winds. So we get into Friday morning, look at this, okay, 6 a.m., the winds ramp up pretty quickly, um, 40, 50 mile per hour gusts. Again, not sustained, sustained will be probably half of this, um, but gusts definitely this high some to 60 okay this this is gonna bring power outages I, i'm just gonna tell you just my experience wet ground 40 mile an hour gusts 50 60 that's gonna bring trees gonna bring power lines down we have a lot of trees here guys people work on power lines know this is this is not a great setup there are gonna be power outages and the other concern from a power outage standpoint we're not the only ones i just talked about atlanta being it's hugo a lot of power lines down there uh, probably power lines down in South Carolina, Florida. Boy, linemen are going to be very, very busy. So everybody that's a lineman or is a family member of a lineman, please, please be safe. 
and we love the work you do. Thank you for everything. It is going to be busy. Basically, what I'm saying, they're going to be stretched thin. They got a lot of area that's going to have to be covered. So these power outages might linger for a while because of how extensive they are and how widespread. Friday morning winds are still howling. So Friday morning, overnight into you know or Thursday night, Friday morning, they get bad. But you can see by Friday afternoon, it's still breezy. Don't get me wrong, it's windy here, but the winds are subsiding. And the other thing, the rain is moving out. So things improve pretty dramatically. So the flooding, this is the biggest impact besides the wind. If you're going to rank them, it goes rain, flooding, wind, power outages. That's kind of the uh, impacts. Now, all of them will happen. Here's the flooding. This is today. High impact to medium impact in the mountains. Okay. This is Wednesday, today. <laughs> the storm's not going to hit till Thursday night, Friday. This is that predecessor event. Okay. Okay. Here's Thursday. Uh oh, we got extreme. Hey, I told you Monday, Sunday, we were talking about extreme rainfall event. And sure enough, now everybody's kind of playing catch up here. Um, and sure enough, that setup is there. This is like a bad, bad setup for heavy rain in the mountains. I cannot really emphasize it enough. People that live in the mountains, you've seen this story before. Landfalling tropical systems in the eastern Gulf, Panhandle moving north. Bad news for us in the, in the mountains of North Carolina. Um, this is Thursday, Friday. Um, we'll show you real quickly. Still high to medium in the mountains, but again, improving late in the day. And by the time we get to Saturday, we should see some rapid improvement with that. So I know this is longer than I expected, but I just want to give you guys a heads up. It's coming, okay? Don't focus on this track. It, it's showing you where the center of the winds are going to go, but the worst weather is going to be over us. Real quickly, precipitation, that's through, that's through Georgia. Here's through North Carolina. You can see we scaled back the rain a little bit. Still some flooding, um, about three and a half, four inches. I'd say four to six for the Piedmont, but in the mountains, six to 12, maybe 15 inches. I mean, that's off the charts. And also the winds. This is why I think this is Atlanta's Hugo. Those are hurricane force winds in northern Georgia. Okay. That's widespread power outages. For North Carolina, in the mountains, we could see gusts to 40, 50. I think these are a little low, um, but this is conservative. 40, 45, maybe 50 mile per hour gust. So that should give you a good gauge to prepare. What, what should you do? First thing you do is don't freak out. Just be prepared for power outages. Um, if you can avoid travel Thursday night, Friday, probably okay. But don't discount travel because once the system moves out, interstates should be mostly fine. It's going to be about power, those secondary roads and flooding and culverts and stuff like that. So I'll post most or more updates. I'll post some of this information as well. But if you got friends or family in northern Georgia and the mountains of North Carolina, western um, upstate of South Carolina, eastern Tennessee, this is the real deal. Please take this seriously. I know it's a hurricane and you live inland, but as we learned from Hugo, these things cause major issues well inland.